it's time to shift gears again. I, I was reading the internet the other day and I came I became very surprised. I found a book that you had written called yep. uh, Dice Games Properly Explained, which I love the title. Uh, yep. <laughs> what is somebody who doesn't use, for the most part, dice in any game that I've played that you've yeah. done? What are yep. you doing writing a game or a book on dice? Um, <laughs> it, it was just a, a, a fascinating project. And after having had uh, given myself a little bit more time by retiring from my other job, I said, I'll give myself that treat and write this book. I did some research, and I found uh, there are very few dice game books around, and I looked into the different languages and the different cultures and collected a lot of different um, games and uh, categorized them and put them into a, a, uh, a, a, a very, for me, very fascinating um, piece of, uh, of a collection of dice games. Mm. It's a very different project. It's, I've, I've written some game books before, but the ones I have written before were all about my original design. Oh, okay. Uh, so which is a very, very different approach. And this one, it was just nice to be able to look at other designs and uh, look at some other dice games and, uh, and take them together. And as they were dice games, and I have hardly done any games involving dice. Exactly. Uh, there wasn't a big conflict of uh, putting this book together and so I didn't have to judge between my own uh, uh, designs and other designs. Uh, it, there is hardly any overlap, and I found that uh, that helped me actually doing the book. Well, I mean, w now that we've gotten 100 of your games in the past 10 years, how, how did this all start? What, what drove you to, to become a designer uh, of, of games, an author of games, instead of just staying in the banking business or uh, the finance business that you were in? I think... Game design always starts with loving games, uh, playing games, enjoying games. In my personal situation, I grew up in a small town in, in Germany, and uh, I liked playing games, but I didn't have the access to the, to the games market, so I, uh, I didn't find the games I was looking for. I didn't find the themes, maybe a motor racing game or whatever, so I, I did my own ones. I started taking games and putting other themes on top of it. I started changing games how I liked it, I started doing my own games about uh, uh, knights and uh, uh, and castles and rivers and bridges. I have prototypes at home, uh, which which go back when I was 10 years old. And uh, yes, they may not have been very good games according to today's standards, but it was a trek into game design. And I've 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 had many different lives, but I uh, I have never really forgotten the game design. I mean, I've I've I studied mathematics, I taught at universities, I lived in Syracuse, uh, uh, taught mathematics there for a while in upstate New York. Uh, my second life was in the financial industry. Reiner, uh, what you're mentioning now uh, brings me to another point then, because you say you grew up in Germany and the German market is completely different. I don't think people in this country know that. And yep. what I mean is it, you sell a lot more of your games in Germany than you do in this country. And, and games in, in Germany are treated differently as far as how they're perceived. Could yes. you speak to that a little bit? Yes. I mean, with this respect, Germany is a real paradise. Uh, because <laughs> in, in Germany, uh, playing games is a real cultural value. It's a real family value. The families, it, it's a good thing to sit in the family and play games with each other, with the children, with the grandparents. Uh, people sit around the table, they enjoy each other, they have a lot of social interaction there, and uh, it, it is a family value which is, uh, which is uh, uh, done in many, many f families, and it's a real, uh, very strong support for the games within the culture and within the society, and that, of course, is an extremely good basis to place the games, to publish games. There is a very, very strong and very, very powerful core of gamers there, many 10,000 of very enthusiastic gamers who go to the different shows who will buy the new games and are, are simply making it so much easier uh, for small publishers simply to be there and to publish good games because there are lots of niches which, which you can cover. Uh, with hmm. this respect, as I say, Germany is a paradise. Germany has much more focus uh, on the game mechanics, on the game system. That's the main thing. Uh, and that's, again, a difference to the States or the Anglo-American market where 
there is a lot of emphasis on the theme, on the world in which you play, on the fascination which comes from the role you take over, and probably a little bit less on on focus on the game system. Uh, one more question. What what can we look forward to in the next uh, six months to a year uh, that's, that's something I better start putting my money away for? Well, I'm always working on a lot of designs at the same time. I think one of the highlights for, for the autumn will be the Lord of the Ring game, mm. uh, which is coming out in Germany and then at the beginning of next year in, uh, in the United States as well. Um, otherwise, you can definitely expect uh, uh, a number of larger board games and a number of smaller uh, card games. And if you have children, I will have some new children games as well. Okay, anything in the multiplayer uh, category like Through the Desert that uh, I can look forward to for myself? Uh, Yes, there will be something nice. Now, why am I so hesitant in being specific? I will tell you the reason for that. I strongly believe if I license a product to a publisher, then I leave the marketing and when they release information to them. I think if I interfere with them, I take away the possibilities for them to place it in the right way when it suits them. And therefore, my strict principle is I, I do not talk about children which are not yet born. And once they are born, that means released. Uh, then I'm very happy to give you all the background to it. But what I can assure you is there will be some more games in the pipeline. Well, that sounds very fair. And <laughs> since you said it that way, we're going to have to put the, put you on the spot and say uh, sometime down the road, maybe later this summer, we can get you back. I would be delighted to come. Well, I can't thank you enough. Yeah, thank you so much, Ron.